Hi, my name is Samantha and I'm the Adult Services Librarian at the McGurk Horton branch of the Greensboro Public Library. To celebrate American Artist Appreciation Month, which happens during August, I made my own Jackson Pollock inspired action painting. And today I will show you how you can make yours at home in just a few simple steps. This was a really fun and a really easy project. Uh, it's very messy, so I encourage you to get the whole family involved because you'll have a ton of fun just throwing paint at paper or canvas. Um, so thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. Jackson Pollock is one of the most well-known of the action painters. Um, pictured here is his Autumn Rhythm number 30. It was made in 1950 and it is widely considered to be the first action painting. It was made by Jackson Pollock pouring and splattering paint on the canvas. Instead of carefully made shapes, any shapes that are seen in this painting are determined by the thickness of the paint or the speed and direction of the impact of the paint or the way that the paint interacts with other layers of paint. In a interview in the first and only issue of the magazine Possibilities in winter 1947, Jackson Pollock is quoted as saying, on the floor I am more at ease. I feel nearer, more a part of the painting since this way I can walk around it, work from the four sides, and literally be in the painting. Other action painters include Willem de Kooning, Arshel Gorky, and Franz Klein, whose 1956 painting Monitor is pictured here. So in order to make your own action painting, there are a few supplies that you will need. If you're working inside or if you just don't want to get your yard very messy, I would definitely recommend a drop cloth, which I had to use. You'll also need either canvas or big pieces of thick paper. Um, I used three sheets of thick watercolor paper. You'll also need your tools. Um, so not necessarily paintbrushes, though you can use those. Um, it can be really anything. I used a lot of squeeze bottles. I used sticks, uh, spoons, whisks. I tried to use turkey baster. Um, so really you can let your imagination run wild. And then of course you'll need your paint. And I stuck with four colors. I used black, red, white, and blue. On the first day, I used a paint stirrer, an old dried brush, a plastic spoon, and a old ketchup bottle. At the end of the first day, this is what my paper looked like. My method was just to use one color at a time and walk in a circle around the painting, throwing the paint onto the paper. I would do this for about 15 minutes at a time, and I did it three times throughout the day just to give the paint a chance to dry. The best tool that I used on day one was definitely the squeegee bottle. And the least successful tool that I used was actually probably the paintbrush. <laughs> on the second day, I used a squeeze bottle, a turkey baster, a pastry brush, and a spray bottle. And here is the painting on the end of the second day. I used the same method every day, just using one color at a time, walking in a circle, splattering paint. I found that the turkey baster and the spritzer bottle did not work at all. The paint that I used was just too thick, so they might work for you, um, but I really enjoyed using the pastry brush. On the third day, I only used ketchup bottles and the pastry brush because these were the two different items that I found worked best for the look that I wanted. Here's the painting on the end of the third day. On the fourth and final day, I used a uh, pastry brush, the red and black paint in the squeeze bottles, and a plastic palette knife. Here is the completed Jackson Pollock inspired painting. I did use three pieces of paper for this, um, and you can see that I trimmed the paint off of the edges of one and left the other two pieces of paper kind of connected through the paint. Um, I really liked the effect of the raw paint edges around the paper, um, but I wanted to see what it looked like when it was neat. 
Um, the hardest part of this project for me was deciding when to stop painting, um, because in theory you could continue painting forever, adding more and more layers of splattered paint. If you're interested in learning more about abstract expressionism, action painting, or Jackson Pollock, here are some really great resources that are available at the Greensboro Public Library. Of course, you can always ask a librarian for help as well. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the library soon.